guys are armed. You come across here when the cartel's in here, they'll get a hold of you, young lady. Oh, here they come. Okay, go, go. Tell them to hide. Tell them to hide. Armed vigilantes in Southern Arizona are intercepting unaccompanied children and taking down their personal information. Como se llama? Margarita. They're also confronting the children's U.S.-based relatives at home. This self-appointed border force has a history of associating with far-right groups like the Proud Boys and QAnon. But there's all kinds of people out here fighting to shape American perceptions of what's happening at the border. They're bringing violence. Those people are coming in. These are the migrants caught in the middle of this debate. Estoy arriesgando mi vida por ayudar a, a mi familia. In this report for AJ Plus, we take a closer look at the people who go patrolling for migrants. It's all about God, family, and country. And the ones who are doing what they can to help migrants on their journeys. There are people in need. If somebody needs water in the desert, you give it to them. A lot of rattlers out here right now, so watch where you're walking. A warning for our viewers, many of the claims you'll hear made by this group are unsubstantiated and often tied to anti-immigrant conspiracy theories. This is a cartel camp right here. It's where they're all setting up. This is called a layup site. It's a shaded resting spot where migrants change from desert gear into street clothes after they've made it across the border. I want America to wake the hell up, see what's really happening on our borders. We got enough fentanyl coming to our borders to kill every last man, woman, and child here in America. Many people in the U.S. wrongly believe that migrants are bringing fentanyl across the border. In fact, it's overwhelmingly being smuggled by U.S. citizens through official ports of entry. But that should concern you as well, and you, because it's going to your countries now too. I already know that. Check out the fentanyl dust in your countries. We're from America. Yeah, I'm just saying, I'm telling you, we're Al Jazeera and places like that. Jonathan belongs to the Arizona militia and often coordinates with Veterans on Patrol, or VOP. VOP is a small group of armed civilians posing as guardians of the U.S. border. They portray migrants as dangerous predators and drum up money and support through social media. They've gained a loyal following by peddling misinformation about child sex trafficking. Hey, Paul, is that, is that some new stuff right here? Yep. That's what I thought. I wasn't here last time. Here you got a pair of jeans. A pair of jeans. That looks like a woman to me. Young woman or definitely female, though. Only a handful of members work at the border, but their influence on social media is widespread, especially on Telegram, where they've amassed thousands of followers. It's here that they've tapped into people's fears about child safety, pushing the unfounded conspiracy that unaccompanied minors are being funneled into government-funded pedophilia rings. Child sacrifice, satanic holidays, lots of babies coming through. These kids often carry an address and phone number of a relative in the U.S. who can sponsor them. VOP collects that information and says they want to help. Yeah, if you go to a bad sponsor, you call us. We'll have more on what they do with children's phone numbers and addresses later. But for now, listen to the founder of VOP, Michael Lewis Arthur Meyer. There are governments that are protecting the pedophiles. And there are pedophiles that are controlling the governments. Meyer is a Christian nationalist who caters his messaging to veterans, even though he isn't one himself. He's also been convicted of multiple assault charges. And this is the main guy on the ground, Paul Flores. A lot of times when they throw him like that in the cactus, it's because they don't want you to get him for a reason. See, there's something in that pocket. That is just toilet paper and like Vicks vapor rub. Paul is a former UFO hunter who was at the January 6th uprising, which he says he covered as a journalist. He's also not a veteran. Oh yeah, definitely women. There's no reason for a woman to walk this far through that desert uh, if she could just stop at the border and ask for asylum. But asking for asylum isn't that simple. Right now, there's a million and a half asylum seekers just waiting for a hearing in the U.S. And proving your case is incredibly tough. Climate disasters and poverty force people out, but don't qualify them for asylum. Violence is another chronic problem, but you must prove you're being targeted. 
Restrictive immigration policies like this actually increase the demand for smuggling, which is run by Mexican cartels. And asylum seekers legally have to make their request on U.S. soil, so they pay smugglers to lead them to gaps in the border wall. And this is where VOP comes in, claiming in videos that these people are being trafficked when many are willingly waiting to turn themselves in to request asylum. Economic migrants also pay smugglers, but they get routed through the deadliest parts of the desert to try and go undetected. If they make it out alive, they'll join the roughly 10 million undocumented migrants in the U.S. working low-wage jobs, often in dangerous conditions. We went to one of the areas where smugglers push people through, and that's where we found Marvin and other asylum seekers. Donde vivimos es este pobre, pues no podemos este, tener ahí a la familia y más que nada, pues siempre hay el, el tráfico, el narcotráfico, pues y por eso nos estamos inmigrando para acá. Qué bien, ella. Advocates told us that Border Patrol can sometimes take hours to show up, but the day we were filming, they arrived shortly after the interview started. The word is along the wall that Samaritans don't ask questions, they just give food and water to people that need it. Gail Kosarek visits the wall three times a week to look for folks whose smugglers have sent across the border. I've met teenagers here more than once and unaccompanied children too at this location. Some families pay smugglers to route their children through openings in the border wall, hoping it will be easier for them to claim asylum as an unaccompanied minor. People go, oh, they must hate their children. They, they love their children. That's why they try to get a better life for them. They might have family here. They have papers on them saying, we have family in San Diego. Please connect my child with my family. Gail is part of the Tucson Samaritans, a prominent aid group in the area. Summer! I see people. Samaritanos! There were some people walked on the, under, behind the trees way out there. Ask him if he's from Sinaloa. ¿Tú vienes de, de dónde? Sinaloa? Where? Of course. Yeah, because I could tell his hat. <laughs> Gail has just learned that they belong to an infamous Mexican cartel. They don't look any older than teenagers. Moments later, another surprise. We could hear and see a vehicle speeding toward us down the road. Concerned it could be a militia, she urged them to hide. Okay, yeah, rapido, rapido. We asked Gail about giving water to cartel members. I always wish them luck, doesn't matter who they are. Wish them luck, go with God, because if they're a hawk, it's the bottom of the rung. In the cartels, these kids can't get other jobs, and they're expendable. That's the tragic part about it. There's a hundred other guys out there waiting for that same job because they can't get a job. And you're willing to give water to anybody? They're people, too. They're people. They're people in need. But the members of VOP don't see it that way. At another layup site, Paul continues his search for evidence of drug smuggling and sex trafficking rings. What I'm looking for is mainly cell phones. I mean, nine times out of 10, it's gonna be a burner phone, but every now and then they're dumb enough to use their, their real phone. Because asylum seekers need ski masks. Anybody who's smuggling themselves over the border is not a, a good person, is what you're saying. Exactly. If you're wearing that and evading border patrol, there's really only one explanation for that. And that's because you're a bad guy. You don't qualify for asylum. You've been deported, sex offenders, rapists. Back on the road with Gail, we were about to meet some of the people who Paul says are the bad guys. Yeah, because they're scared. Get your window down. Yeah, they don't know who we are. I got to go. Okay. See, they might come back now. See, that's why we have the cross on the door. Gail knows what's in store for this group. It could be over a week of walking through lethal heat with very little food or water. Donde eres uh, su casa? Uh, Mexico. 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 Mis padres carecieron de recursos y y pues nada más me dieron primaria y con eso pues también no puedo sobresalir. Estoy dejando a mis cinco hijos y a, a mi mujer. Me dolió dejarlos, la verdad. Me partió el alma, pero pero sé que ellos me van a, me necesitan y me van a necesitar más adelante. Todos están chicos. Quiero, quiero 
The U.S. offers a limited number of work visas for foreigners, and the conditions are so restrictive that migrants like Santiago and Anna have virtually no way to legally apply to work in the U.S. Si se busca es muy difícil. La verdad es muy difícil para tramitar, por ejemplo, la visa. Es muy difícil. Tarda mucho y es mucho dinero también. Entonces, pues lo más fácil, yo creo, por así decirlo, es por acá. De otra manera, pues. ¿Y cuál es tu sueño? ¿Qué quieres hacer tú? Pues ayudar a mi familia. Ayudar a mi familia. Estamos con la mejor intención de trabajar, de servir a otro país, ¿verdad? How many of that group, okay, were just regular people that are trying to get a better life and they're paying somebody to help them get to that better life? The cartel that, you know, that are making all the money like El Chapo and making all the money on drugs and, and human trafficking, that guy's on top. He's making a fortune. In other words, in this area of southern Arizona, cartel members are mostly in the business of transporting people, not instigating gun battles. Several sources we spoke with backed this up. And the reason this is so important is because VOP relies on an imaginary border war with the cartel to gain support from its followers. We're in the danger zone. Uh, when you come down to the border, this is, if the cartel's going to strike at you, this is where they're going to do it. So right here, what's happening, they're hanging out all through here. You see the little white building, like a little makeshift church. This is a strong, uh, cartel stronghold right here. How do you know that? We have members of the team that have been on that side. Doesn't that mean you're crossing over there illegally? Well, I've never done it. But what Paul has done is vandalize humanitarian aid because he claims the people supplying it are coordinating with the cartel. Yeah, keep going helping uh, ensure that people at least live another day. If it's water that they need, that's, that's what we're trying to do. Lori, Scott, and Kirk volunteer for Humane Borders, a nonprofit that's been putting out water tanks for migrants for over two decades. People are dying right here, or all around us, men, women, and little kids. And it's not okay, not in America. This isn't about the rhetoric and the politics. It's, it's about life and death. I want to make sure that the world knows what's happening here and not through the filter of a propaganda channel or a militia member, but the truth. Kirk says they have more important things to worry about than VOP's sabotage. Yeah, I think it's just their way to demonize what we're doing. If they just admitted that what we're trying to do is save lives, there wouldn't be a way for them to develop sympathy for for their efforts or to raise money. VOP readily shows the faces of children online among its near daily appeals for cash app payments and Amazon donations. On Telegram, the group says they need the money to keep fighting their various operations, and their followers are coming through for them. In fact, someone recently purchased a car for one VOP member. Meantime, their methods of screening unaccompanied minors in the desert has only grown more intrusive. In one incident, a self-proclaimed pedophile hunter showed up at an address that a teenage asylum seeker gave VOP just days earlier. Do you know if um, Henry has family here in America? Uh, no. No, he does not have no. family here, or you don't know? No, I'm the only cousin. You're, you're his cousin? Yeah. yeah. This is as far as their outreach goes, posting more videos to social media. VOP members claim to have saved hundreds of children from being trafficked, but haven't provided us any proof to back it up. What would you say to folks who say what you're doing, um, tracking down sponsors in the U.S., is extreme or beyond the scope of what a normal citizen should be doing? Come out here and spend a week with me. And then ask me the same question. That's what I would tell them. Why? Uh, because they probably wouldn't even ask me that same question. They would know exactly why I'm out here doing what I do. But most of what Paul has been doing over the last decade shows a pattern of questionable behavior. He has a record of convictions ranging from criminal trespass to facilitation of prostitution and multiple warrants for failing to pay child support. In fact, many of Paul's own supporters have accused him of running donation-based scams in the past. We spoke with an ex-VOP volunteer who thinks they're weaponizing legitimate issues like child safety and veterans' rights for financial gain. 
They say they're being patriots and protecting our country. They say that they just want to pray for children and help them. I didn't see any cartel. I didn't see any bad guys. I didn't see these things that they're saying. It mostly just looks like a huge grift, you know, to just be able to live without working and paying taxes. Why are you speaking out against them? Because they say that they're Christian people and they're stealing money from from actual veterans, from veterans' widows, single moms, and there's nothing that shows that they're helping other people. They're helping themselves. They're also helping inspire a range of other groups to join their operations at the border. In 2022, they teamed up with American conspiracy movement QAnon. In 2023, another group of extremists showed up to corral children at night and continue their harassment of humanitarians by day. The American public thinks there's a war. They think there's an invasion. They think there's an enemy, and there really isn't. If we could get people to come out, see what it's like on the border, and volunteer, you know, help with the situation, that's what would be really great. After wrapping up our interview, Kirk, Lori, and Scott were confronted by a rancher who stopped on the side of the road to criticize them for helping migrants. You promise them water, what are you going to bring? If you put out milk for cats, what do you get? You get more cats. Well, they're coming whether we put it out or not. That's the truth. And then you go home to your home where it's safe, but you brought crime here. We didn't bring crime. We didn't bring crime. You're aiding and abetting. You're I feel water. safer here. here. So they can keep coming. <laughs> tell your brother. Tell your cousins back home. There's, we don't have to tell them they're being... Here. They're being pushed out of their homes by crime, by famine, by global warming that the United States is contributing to. We can't control that stuff in those countries. And even though you think most of these people are coming from Central America, I've processed the, the asylum seekers at Casa Elitis now for the last seven months. We're getting people from Uzbekistan, Soviet That's Georgia, safe. India. That's wonderful. No, the Border Patrol. That is not a problem at all for us to take these people in from those kind of countries. It's that legal, it's a human to right to seek asylum, sir. It's a human right. Have a nice day. The idea that migrants are coming to the U.S. to commit crimes is a myth that's persisted throughout the country's history. And yet, research overwhelmingly shows that immigrants are less likely than U.S.-born citizens to carry out violent crimes. As ever, caught in the middle of debates about immigration and illegal crossings are people like Anna and Santiago, so desperate to escape poverty that they'd risk everything just for a chance to work in the U.S. 